What does Pinocchio have to teach us about branding? Today we are asking the question, can guilt used as a branding tactic be used for good? And you are going to want to stick around until the end of this episode because I'm going to provide you with access to a great tool that you can use to strengthen your brand's emotional connection with your ideal individuals. There's no doubt that guilt can be a powerful call to action, especially if you think of it in terms of our conscience, right? Our inner moral compass that kicks in and starts chirping in our ear like Jiminy Cricket. (laughs) Anytime we even so much as contemplate taking actions that are in conflict, with our values and ethics. Thank goodness, right? In the Disney version of Pinocchio, Jiminy Cricket advises Pinocchio, always let your conscience be your guide. And the moment Pinocchio dismisses the advice is the moment things go awry. The original version written by Carlo Caldotti and his brilliant story, this metaphor for the human condition has such a powerful impact on the world that to this day, it remains, get this, the most widely translated and widely read piece of Italian literature, second only to the Bible. Ah! So is that a testament to the power of guilt in marketing or is it a testament to the power of redemption in marketing? Perhaps the two should go hand in hand. You know, I think it bears mentioning that the Disney version of Pinocchio really kind of sugarcoats, as it should, sugarcoats the original story where Pinocchio actually chucks a hammer at Jiminy and kills him within moments of the little cricket trying to explain to Pinocchio that his actions are wrong and have negative consequences that need to be considered by him and made amends for. I guess he just didn't want to hear it. Don't worry, the cricket comes back later as a ghost and then the fairy brings him back to life in the end. Don't want to ruin anyone's childhood here. I'm just saying, guilt is a very painful emotion, an experience of regret and self-blame. It makes a person want to escape from themselves or like turn back time or just do anything to make things right again. But that's what makes it so powerful. Research has shown that in situations where a brand often, a nonprofit, has the goal of trying to compel a person to stop taking a particular action, such as drinking or smoking, when they employed fear as their main tactic by delivering like death rate statistics, showing the harrowing images of the physical effects it can have on their body, or introducing them to case studies about how hopeless life can be or can become from continuing down that destructive path, the effects these scare tactics would seem to hit them at first and then wear off quickly. Often people would just get overwhelmed and feel like the habit was too big and strong and scary for them to even begin to attempt without feeling defeat. So they might as well surrender. So the goal of scaring them into wanting to break away from the habit and make a positive change was not effective. What was effective, and this is where it gets so good for you, is instead of showing them what they were doing to themselves, They instead began showing them what their destructive habits were doing to the people around them, the people who love them. They started using guilt instead of fear to motivate people to get better, if not for themselves, then for the ones they loved. And the message started getting through. And many people did and do recover through the use of guilt tactics. Guilt is a powerful motivator and it can be used in marketing successfully to grow a brand. But here's what is so important to acknowledge. When considering how to tap into this powerful emotional trigger, the guilt alone is not what motivates action. The guilt alone is painful and isolating and incredibly uncomfortable. What motivates the action is when that guilt is met with the possibility of redemption. Keeping that in mind, I have for you three things to understand about using guilt in your branding. Number one, here's why it works. Fear comes and goes, but guilt is an emotion that will just sort of linger. And most people have guilt in some form or another. The most common reasons that people have lingering guilt is from not being able or being more able or be more available to the people in their lives, having more time to spend with their families, having more money to be more successful, like skipping the gym, splurging on unhealthy food, all very common, very human situations people find themselves navigating in life every day. So let me tell you about a very effective marketing campaign that I found that uses the tactic for successfully building a brand using the emotion of guilt so that you can use it in your brand if it suits your ideal individuals. A campaign launched by Craftman Power Tools. 
right? Craftman Power Tools is using this. One ad shows a man holding a line trimmer, you know, like a weed whacker. Anyway, he got this propane powered machine in his hand and he's working his yard, blue sky, look calm, determination on his face. And the ad reads, cleans your yard, clears your conscience. Boom, not guilt, but guilt aversion. It's the real key to this campaign. Another ad from the same series shows a guy using a nice lawnmower and it says, cut grass, cuts time. This will speak to the many people who work all week only to see their kids at night and when the weekend rolls around they can either choose to spend it with their family or lose a whole day of catching up on the housework, the yard work, the professional work, whatever adult work they had. But you can see how subtle the human and how relatable it is. No shame, no blame, just life on life's terms and a solid product that can make your life better and easier. Another example would be Skinny Cow Brand. Their motto is, life is meant to be lived, fun is meant to be had, and dessert is most definitely meant to be eaten. They've created delicious treats for people who would otherwise beat themselves up for indulging, and they alleviated that painful, self-shaming tendency by offering a way to treat yourself without the guilt. In fact, there are many healthier alternatives to classic comfort foods on the market today, and their main sales point when you're looking isn't that the products have less calories or carbs or whatever. The decision to buy is emotional, and the motivation to buy these treats is strongly rooted in the desire to seek guilt aversion. It's not for the brand to layer on the guilt. It's not for us to make people feel bad. It's for the brand to recognize the guilt that's already there and be as compassionate and trusted ally in creating the opportunity for redemption. Number two, here's why it doesn't work. There's several reasons why using outright guilt tactics in branding can backfire. People get defensive, feel attacked, or are like unfairly judged. A big reason why guilt tactics don't work is because they raise suspicions. Scams often operate that way. Ever hear about marketing schemes that hire really charming, manipulative people to try to convince others that in order to be successful, they need to be willing to like mortgage their home or dip into their kids' college funds, sell whatever assets, do whatever it takes now because that's the kind of risk that really pays off. That's how the top dogs do it, they'll tell you. It'll all be worth it, they'll tell you. And if you're not willing to do that, then maybe you just don't have what it takes. Don't have the heart, don't have the stomach, don't really want to be successful or provide a better life for your family. Oh my gosh, I could never say such a thing. And you know what? Buyers are much more sophisticated now that the internet has leveled the playing field and they are no longer buying blind. Now, we Google businesses and we read reviews and we are far more connected than ever before. But the lingering effects of these scams still remain in the psyches of all of us and people do still fall victim to them. So using guilt as a marketing tactic, it's a fine line that we're, we're delineating here between emotional fulfillment and emotional manipulation. And because it is one of the emotional triggers in branding that falls into the negative spectrum or can fall into that negative spectrum, it is up to your brand, it is your responsibility to bring in that love, that possibility of redemption. Another reason guilt doesn't work is because studies have proven that people with high self-esteem feel natural aversion to guilt, messaging, and branding. It's just not their tribe, no matter how great the product or service, and regardless if they could really benefit from purchasing it, the decision to buy is emotional, and we want to align ourselves with brands that are building communities that make us feel at home, that are aligned with our emotional needs. In general, most research will affirm that guilt tactics are most effective when the goal is to appeal to a person to stop taking a certain action. And for the product sales, a positive message has a much cleaner shot at inspiring a person to buy. It's the responsibility of the brand to bring the positive. So be the positive when using negative emotional triggers. Who the positive? You the positive. Number three, here's how it can work for you. Well, what are the common human relatable lingering guilts that circle around your ideal individuals? Ask yourself that question. And how can your brand offer them relief, redemption? Alongside most guilt comes the strong, strong desire to set things right. And motivation is increased as your ideal individual's feelings of competence and self-determination are increased. So create a brand who is a strong supporter and a relentless believer in your ideal individual's ability to step into the greater future 
promised by your brand. If you make them feel capable, worthy, and supported enough to take the necessary actions to reduce their guilt, then you are steering up a seriously powerful motivation for them to join your brand community and therefore focus your efforts on reassuring your ideal individuals that they are easily capable of living into a greater future with the help of your brand. Make them a promise and then keep it again and again and again. So they tell their friends with certainty your brand is the real deal. So now you know the three things to understand about using guilt in branding. How it works, how it doesn't work, and how it can work for you. Use this emotional trigger of guilt in your branding messages to come with great responsibility. So root your efforts in love and with a desire to make people's lives better. I always tell my clients, if it ain't got heart, go back to the start. As promised, I want to give you a gift, a wonderful tool I've created to give you some actionable clarity going forward. A branding checklist filled with the top tips to connect with your audience in 2021. You can find it in the description and I want you to use it to fast track your progress with building a healthy and thriving brand community. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss a single thing. I release new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so treat these episodes as your masterclass for becoming an inspiration to millions with your brand. And as always, the way to become an inspiration to millions starts with our motto, love what you do and love how you do it. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe below. And here's something else I think you'll love.